uh, time management, no, take study skills, good study skills. Giving them strategies that will help them access learning. Using graphic organizers. Again, here's it's just a very simple graphic organizer for cause and effect. You can do this with compare and contrast. But, you know, it, this gives, shows relationships be, between concept. You can do this on inspiration and then, and then export it, or you can just do it as, a, uh, as its own product. But the research on graphic organizers is very robust. So um, using, using graphic organizers to support learning, even if it's an intermediate step toward a written product, um, it's a very helpful summarizer and learning tool. And it's not complicated either. Um, and they have, you know, this sort of stuff they have all over the internet, too. So, and breaking down assignments, again, here, we saw that already. Um, the other thing, if you're gonna do a lecture, um, or a, an extended period of time where you're speaking to students and maybe showing visuals or whatever. One thing that's really helpful too is what's called the pause procedure, which is you break up your lecture at intervals and then pause for discussion. Probably I haven't done that all night, but you know, hey. Um, <laughs> in any case, uh, that's another way to, again, solicit feedback and uh, check for, probe for understanding and things like that. And, you know, for younger kids, we don't do this that much, but as we move on up through the grades, these happen. Again, in, instructor approachability has proven, again, when you look at best practices, good teaching, you know, the instructor approachability stimulates affective learning or a connection, a personal emotional connection, um, and will increase students' willingness to seek help, which unfortunately a lot of students won't do, especially those with learning difficulties because they don't want to seem weak, you know. But Again, if you have a class climate where students feel comfortable, it really cuts down on the fear, anxiety, you know, component. Um, and that you support a culture that values diversity, which, you know, is something that you set up pretty much at the beginning of the year or the beginning of the course or, or whatever. Um, <coughs> And uh, so for people who teach in a college or post-secondary setting, having an inclusive disability statement in the course, you know, in the course uh, uh, syllabus, very helpful, making a, or in any, any class, high school, middle school, you know, making it clear that you, embrace diversity and different learning styles and different learning needs and that you're flexible enough to um, welcome assistive technology and other accommodations as well but the re you know but and through using those things you're you're really able to raise standards there doesn't need to be you know any uh, there, there don't need to be any papers turned in that aren't spell checked. You know, PowerPoints shouldn't have misspelled words. Um, concepts should be, you know, it's not, you know, parts, expectations should be there for everyone. And I've done it and it really works. You know, it really does work. If students have the ability to perform these things with technology or whatever. Um, and that, um, let's see, I'm going to sort of move here, through here. Um, 
and uh, stop for questions. One of the things, and this was actually, uh, I printed this out for you, um, is some online references and resources. Um, supporting digital text, there's a couple of uh, great resources uh, that are actually free. Uh, first of all, bookshare.org got a huge grant from the Department of Education so that uh, anyone with a print disability that's documented or a school can register with them and students in the school have access to those texts. Um, the other one for textbooks uh, is there's a, a national um, a National Center for uh, in, National and Center for Instruction and uh, Accessible Materials, so on. That can be accessed. It's, uh, it has the acronym NIMAS, N I M A S, or N I M A C. You can access that through the CAST website by using that. Uh, that URL, aim.cast.org, and there's lots of information about how to do it, because it's got some bureaucratic rigmarole. But basically, um, there is a national center funded by the, the um, US Department of Education that um, <clears throat> makes possible for uh, students with print disabilities to be able to request textbooks that are digital. And it takes a little bit to train. They have different formats and so on. Ultimately, it can come to the student through um, as a PDF, ultimately, which can be read by a free text reader. You know, there are lots of text readers available that are even free, including uh, Adobe Acrobat, the Adobe Acrobat Reader. Anytime you have a PDF, there is an accessibility function that you can turn on the text reader and it'll just use the text reader that's in your operating system to read. It's not as good as what you heard Kurzweil do, but but it reads. And and then, you know, I mean there's natural there's a bunch of them which you know you can you can also access. In terms of assistive technology, my three favorites. Um, would be Inspiration, which is a graphic organizer software, very inexpensive, like 50, six, maybe 60, $69.99 probably for a single, uh, which would be download directly to your computer, which does all the, makes all the graphic and stuff. Kurzweil, which is ex very expensive, um, but is an excellent piece of software, and for someone who has a lot of difficulty with print, reading print. Um, Kurzweil is, has, is, is sort of the Cadillac or Mercedes-Benz or whatever you want to call it of text read readers. And Nuance makes Dragon Naturally Speaking, which actually isn't all that expensive either and is a way to uh, dictate into the microphone and have text appear for students. And for all kinds of universal design resources, CAST is just, I mean, there's so much to explore on that website. And a lot of it is, uh, has been, that really is the brainchild of David Rose, who is a professor at the Harvard Graduate School of Education and founder of CAST. He has a book called Teaching Every Student in the Digital Age, which explains universal design for learning and talks about um, how to address a lot of those issues. And you can buy it, but you can actually access it. You can download it for free from CAST. So, you know, and, and it was written in 2002, but it, I, I find it's remarkable, it, it has real legs. But there's lots of other stuff too and lots of other products that um, there's a lot of stuff on CAS too for students, for teachers, lesson planning, you know, theoretical stuff, 
um, uh, free downloads to help students navigate the web and so on and so forth. So, um, questions for you all. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Um, are you just overwhelmed or? <laughs> um, Tired. It's the end of the school oh, year. Is this the end of the, oh, it's the okay. end of the school year and it's the end of the day. I know. Don't I, I totally know. This is uh, I just I I really um, I think universal design as kind of a guiding principle uh, underlining a pr underlying approach to education is really helpful. I mean, just asking yourself the question. How many students can actually access this, you know, is well worth doing. Um, and, uh, and, you know, the theory is really based on uh, the way human, you know, the way human brains learn and um, ways to maximize that learning and brain function in everybody so um, so I'm very happy to be able to share it with you and if you have any uh, any questions or if you're looking for any other resources or something please feel free to email me or call me up or whatever thank you very much thank you